What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the O Show Podcast. It's episode 499, presented by Mayweather Boxing and Fitness in Scottsdale, Arizona. Mayweather Boxing and Fitness is an inclusive, high-intensity fitness experience developed by the man himself, Floyd Money Mayweather, formulated with the perfect combination of boxing strength and cardio conditioning intervals designed to make you look good, feel good, and leave you with more than just a great sweat. Head on down to Mayweather Boxing and Fitness. We're also presented by Bet Online. .ag. You could sign up for that 50% bonus at betonline.ag by using the promo code capital BLEAV50. Again, that's capital BLEAV50. We're also sponsored by Eat Clean Phoenix, Arizona's number one meal delivery service Tuesday through Sunday. Head on over to Eat Clean Phoenix for the first time in 499 episodes. I'm getting an IV live on the podcast with Josh and Noel. What's going what on? What the hell? Man, hey, thanks for having us on. Thanks for being a good sport. I, I, can, I can legitimately taste the vitamins in the back of my throat. I didn't think I was going to be able to. That's, that's crazy. Well, um, you said this is the first one you've had since you were a kid, right? Yeah, I think when I was 11 or 12 years old, after playing a baseball game, had like severe heart palpitations mm -hmm. and had to spend the night in the hospital and they were pumping me with IVs. And that was legitimately the last time I think awesome. I've ever, I think the last time I've dealt with needles was like four years ago too. Yeah, they're, they're not my favorite needles uh, you know, <laughs> or anybody for that matter, but I used to have a real big problem with them. Um, so you're doing the Advanced Myers today. So this is one of our most popular bags. Interesting. Uh, Noel, you want to tell them what's in the Advanced Myers? So there's a bag of lactated thinners, which is nice because it has a little bit of electrolytes in it, a little hydrogen. It has vitamin C, it has B complex, it has dexamethamol, it has B6, it has folic acid, it has magnesium, and then it has our glutathione push, which is kind of our the big star of it. It's uh, just an IV push at the end, which is really kind of like an accident. If there are any toxins in your body, they'll be great to just get just kind of the weather or just need a little boost. Mm, I was going to say, I've had a ton of friends recently feel under the weather and they got IVs. I'm like, oh, I guess like I, my thought process of it is that you only get it when you're sick or like, I mean, that's how naive I am. Well, it, it's true. So we really have three different types of customers. We have those that are sick from like COVID, cold, flu. Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, COVID in the flu season was really a busy time for us just from that, that aspect because it helps you with the hydration. Usually you're super dehydrated. The vitamins get in there helps with that. Uh, we also uh, administer Toradol and Zofran. Uh, so Toradol is going to like, you know, take that pounding, you know, sensation in your head. And then Zofran is more like for any nausea that you right. may have. Um, so then uh, we have our second, which is what I call the booze flu. People that have gotten a little too drunk on Friday night, you know, wake up with that hatchet in their head on sat Saturday morning, like, oh, I need someone out here. We get them, you know, up upright, and then more the performance of recovery, which is you know people that just do it for their health, um, you know, because we are chronically dehydrated. We live in the desert. Just that extra bag of saline every couple of weeks definitely helps. And then obviously all the vitamins. How did how did you get into this? Uh, so crazy story actually. Uh, it was about two and a half years, ago, uh, almost three years ago. There's another company that's in this business, and I. Well, so I own a marketing company. I own a digital yeah. agency. We do pay-per-click advertising for all types of different companies. Today, more attorney-focused. But the, uh, the biggest company at that time, they had heard about me and my, what we could do from a pay-per-click advertising to get them traffic. And I set up an appointment. And it was just a video meeting. And I had him take me through his ad account. And like, OK, cool. Uh, open this up. Change this, 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 and this. So cool, of the about 10,000 that you're spending right now, eight of it's a w complete waste, yeah. here's what I would change. You know, and, and this is what we would charge to take it over and I can get you way better results. And then I just never heard from that guy again. But I always thought, what an interesting business to be in. And, and I saw it growing and through a series of events, me and a couple partners uh, decided to, to get started in this business uh, just over a year ago. Uh, we started really operational last January and. Um, they, they have a fitness background, but really a membership. Uh, they grew a company called Pure Fitness out here about 10 years ago to about 50,000 members. Wow. And since they, they sold to LA Fitness, but they know how to grow big organizations, teams, and really membership type of businesses. So we saw this as a good opportunity and it's in the health space. We all like to be healthy and, you know, knock on wood. It seems like it's, it's going pretty darn well. It's probably really well for you too. You're passionate about it. 
you're married with kids, right? I am. So you got your hands full anyways. Always, yeah. It's, I mean, if it's something you love to do, it's awesome. And you're right. Like, for most people who are out Friday night, especially at Rage in the Cage mm-hmm. a couple of weeks back, you were in the ring promoting it, too. Right. Like, if you guys need an extra boost tomorrow morning, I'm there. Absolutely. And how, how often? Like, what, what's the rate of, like, people who are sick, people who are hungover, people who just want to feel hydrated so it really depends on the season and i'll just say like the cold and flu season yeah you know very high percentage uh I'd say 60 70 percent uh when that dies down a little bit like to where it's at now it's usually more like 30 40 percent um hangovers maybe 30 40 but then our repeat customers that just do it for uh to feel good you know they're they're more of that other 30 percent of the business and it's uh, it's kind of neat because even with the, the hangovers like you're talking about, rage in the cage, yeah, you know, it can really get you feeling better within a matter of about 40 minutes, which is what would you say that's the average time uh, for a bag about 40 minutes? Yeah. yeah. With with good veins, yeah, that's right. And so. when did you get into this? Uh, I started working with them in October of last year. So oh wow. Yeah. And I ended up finding the generate on Instagram and saying that they were really active there. And then it just happened to be a couple of days later, they posted that they were looking for nurses. And I oh. figured it was fate, and I sent her a message and met John, who's really mm-hmm. fantastic. And I started working in the network. Wow. What does what your wife do? Uh, so she, my wife, uh, currently, she is the uh, executive assistant for um, a lady who owns an engineering firm in Gilbert, and who also is oh, wow. the co-mayor of Gilbert. Uh, so yeah, she, she does that, and then she raises three kids, and that's that's a whole job in and You ever see the uh, Bill Burr skit where he's just like, oh, being the mother is the most difficult job in the world, and he just makes fun of it? He's like, yeah. I don't know how that's the most difficult job in the world. It's one of my favorite bits. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I love it, yeah. But no, she, she does a ton, and uh, you know I think she's going to continue work there, but she's going to continue to be... Um, really helping us. She helps us with a lot of our nurse orders as they're yeah. coming, picking up orders. Uh, we have a new uh, company that we got started called Body by Design that she's been real intricate in helping with marketing and um, you know helping them get their signs and all that kind of stuff that's up on uh, Tatum and Shea. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So it kind of goes hand in hand. It does. Yeah. That one's more, it's body contouring. Yeah. Um, but we've uh, have this technical technology called the M-Sculpt Neo. So it's got high radio frequency, um, and then it's got uh, pulses. So it's like the equivalent, if you put these paddles on, it's the equivalent of doing 20,000 sit-ups in 30 minutes. So you're not actually sore because it breaks down the lactic acid, but the results are insane. And four treatments over uh, one a week for four weeks, the average is 30% fat loss in that area and 25% muscle increase. So like our before and afters are just insane. So a lot of people use them on their abs, um, girls love really? on their butt, glutes, you can use on your, your uh, biceps and all that kind of stuff. Wow. So that's kind of the new, new thing that we have going on, and uh, that's, that's doing pretty well. I didn't have the option. I, I didn't know I had an option to put it anywhere I wanted. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine I just like, had it on my forehead? Oh, yeah. Like, what's the most obscure place anybody's ever asked to put it in? That, that would be, yeah, where, where? Yeah, I was talking about the, the actual paddles for the other company, but right. the IVs, though, in, in the vein? It, it sparked my interest. It, I'll bet like, you. Like, there's the probably foot. people that have requested to put it. Yeah. There was a Oh, my goodness. So I've had nurses tell us about having to go to the foot, you know, because you have that big vein on yeah. the top of your foot. Okay, um, yeah. I one of my, heard that with Barry Bonds and his whole steroid scandal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the, the one that made me and my partner, John, almost pass out in the interview uh, was an, a, a NICU nurse, so she worked with babies, and she was talking about how um, we asked her, always ask, how are your IV skills? She says, oh, they're really good, and, you know, I work with babies, and obviously if you can work with a baby, right, super tiny yeah. veins, and it, it was like, tell us about one. She says, well, last week I had to stick one in the forehead, and she got her in the forehead, and we're like, wait, what? And yeah, apparently with babies, since like a lot of them, when they don't have a lot of hair, it's easy to, to get an IV through there. So that one literally almost just, and John's worse than I am, so he was just like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> what, What's the funniest, like, d- so, someone who just dazed off and passed out? So Completely unexpected, too. 
probably. Well, okay, so I'll tell you my story then, because this I was, I was Fine, off air. I was telling you about this, right? First of all, I had never had an I had not had an IV uh, literally my entire life. Never yeah. had an IV. I didn't like shots. Didn't like needles. I would avoid it like the plague. So we're doing this leadership at this really nice house in Scottsdale, and I'm one of the guys that's actually leading this deal. And there's maybe 20, 25 guys that are there. And we were looking in getting the IV IV business. So like, well, why don't we have an IV company out there? And after you know we get done with our talks and whatnot, you know we'll do IVs before you know we we hang out and celebrate, you know have some drinks that kind of yeah. thing. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. So nurse gets there and I'm like sweating. I, they already know I don't like it. Right. But I'm a, one of the leaders, right? So I can't back down. So anyway, it gets to my turn. I'm sitting in the chair. The nurse gives me IV. She gets it plugged in, and I'm already, like, starting to sweat a little bit. I'm thinking, okay, this is normal, and I'm breathing, working on that. So she goes and hooks somebody else up, and I'm sitting there, and now my ears start to ring. And I literally am sweating, and I look like I'm about to pass out. The guys that (laughs) were done were standing up, coming over, dude, you okay? I'm like, yeah, I I think so. And uh, this went on for 10 minutes. The bag had only drained about as much as yours. The audience might not be able to see over 20 minutes. Yeah. So she comes back. My arm has blown up like Popeye, which, again, I hadn't had an IV. I didn't know that's not normal. I didn't know I wasn't. I was like, this is as bad as I thought it was going to be. Well, sure enough, she had blown my vein. She comes back. She sees it. Oh, no. She takes it out. She's like, oh, and I only had a quarter of it down. She's like, do you want me to re-stick you? I'm like, hell no. <laughs> I'm, thank you. I, yeah. I appreciate it. And I was nice to her, of course, as you are in these situations, but it was terrible. So I went in, and I then had a shot of tequila to try to get myself over this. And I'm like, I'm never doing that again. I might get in this business. So in a long story short, uh, I had to come the next February. I'm like, I got to get over this. I yeah. promote this business. I can't right. promote something I don't do. And uh, we were at a results party for Burn It, Build It, and Nurse Serena was doing some IVs. So I'm like, well, all right, it's time to get me right. Serena, can you, can you help me? There may or may not have been a couple of beers involved in this. And uh, sure enough, she gave it to me, and I didn't feel anything. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this is amazing. And I felt good afterwards. So then I started getting over it. And so it, that was probably the worst story I had heard. I've never actually seen oh. anybody. Your own you story is the worst story out? you've ever heard. Yeah. That's fun. That's good. That's actually really good. Hey, and I'm in the business, so. <laughs> oh. that, that's true. In fact, all the stories I've heard of those that are like the biggest babies of needles are always dudes. I was one of those dudes, so I'm not necessarily covered in tattoos, but yeah. That's okay. kind of shocking to me. I feel like both genders would be kind of freaked out by nails or by needles. I think women are tougher to much to a lot of things i mean i i hate to say it, but it's true i mean think about it if if it was up to men to have babies oh absolutely we'd be not. extinct absolutely not yep. not a chance mm. i don't even want to think about it yeah this is legitimately my first iv though and like i'm trying to think 11 years and she keeps looking over at my thing as if like there's like a ton of blood in there You're like oh what's what's going on is little, it okay just a little bit it's, yeah no there's no blood in there yeah, no, it's a, it's cool. So it's it's a fun uh, fun business to be in. I'll tell you one of the things that we really enjoy is going out to events. So we're going to, yeah. out to Country Thunder. We had done that oh, um, in October last year, yeah. and it's just such a, a fun time. And, and let's let's face it, everybody out there probably is going to need an IV. It's all they do for like four days straight is drink and have fun and yeah. party and don't drink enough water. So we were out there promoting, and we'll be out there again, and you know probably do a bunch of IVs. I'll probably see you there. I'm big on Florida Georgia Line and Morgan Wallen. So. Oh, Morgan Wallen's one of my favorite. I really, I, I can't wait. I'm excited for him. Uh, Florida Georgia Line, I like too, but I would say Blake Shelton's probably my second of the headliners. I forget. I always forget about Blake Shelton. He is like the stereotypical country guy. Yeah. I yeah. totally forgot he was on the bill. Yeah, he is. Um, trying to think of who we saw. Well, we went to uh, Kane Brown couple weeks like three or four weeks ago and the guy who opened uh rice chase rice chase rice is awesome there he put on a show a really good show in fact i would say almost as good if not better than uh kane kane brown man at his own concert yeah i've been trying to get press stuff for that just to interview some people because my country singer uh 
stamina when it comes to this show is like one person. So yeah. I'm trying to get into the country thunder. I went to Innings Fest a few weeks ago. Uh, Foo Fighters headlined that. Oh. I was basically a full rock show, that entire set, the, the entire lineup. Wow. Which is my forte. Huge I, rock guy. Oh, yeah. No, I love rock and roll. I always have. I, I, got, I didn't get into country until I was a little bit older. Um, yeah. Probably till until my, you mellowed mid, out. Yeah, mid-20s, and I wasn't this, this crazy man. But, oh, yeah, Van Halen and all those guys, man. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm a little older than you. so. I want to say, like, my dad obviously grew up on, like, Van Halen, Guns N' Roses, the, the whole grunge, Nirvana, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, whatever. And then Foo Fighters came along. And then as soon as I hit, like, 12, 13 years old, I'm listening to, like, Zach Brown Band, Gregory Allen Isakoff. I'm mm -hmm. like, who are these guys? Like, this isn't fun music. And now I'm, like, finally appreciating that music it, there's as I get older. There's about country music that I don't think you really appreciate until you get a little older. And I think what it is is you become a little more family-oriented, whereas you weren't before. Because a lot of the things they talk about yeah. is family and hometown and that kind of thing, where when you're growing up and you're just – doing your thing, you're playing sports, you think you're invincible. Yeah. Rock and roll just is more attractive. So I think that's all it is, is maturity. It just gets you going. Yeah. The adrenaline that rock and roll has. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, I still have Motley Crue radio a lot of times yeah. when I'm out there playing golf, cranked up. So it just depends on the setting. Yeah, Noel understands. See, I'm like you. I, I don't listen to a ton of music in the car. I'm more of a podcast guy. I got, like, my four go-tos that I'm consistently... Oh, yeah, I have... <laughs> I'm done. Um, but yeah, I have like four that are my consistent, you know, go-tos and like Andy Frisella's really yes, has, which yep. is great. Um, Ed Milet and then uh, Bradley, you know. Dropping you know, bombs. Like, yeah, dropping bombs is honestly what got me into probably listening more frequently uh, than, than not. So yeah, Bradley's uh, something else. Character always has good, interesting people that a lot of times you've never heard of, but their stories are incredible. I mean, I feel like every other episode, the people were in jail for some period of their time and then came out and are multimillionaires doing whatever, all kinds of just different obscure things. So. A, a lot of the people that have been in this studio on this show in the recent months are because they were on his show. And I'm like, I got to get him in here. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like I started listening to him, I think when COVID started, mm -hmm. I got into it and I'm like, this guy's brilliant. Like he's very raw and real and there's probably a lot of people that don't like Bradley. Yeah. But if you stand, like, with his beliefs and you think, like, yeah, like, this is how you become successful. No right. BS. Like, there's no BS with him. None. He, he's not trying to be everyone's friend. He has his audience. And he will sit there and argue with you. On, on the show, like, if he wants you to go deeper on a point or he doesn't agree with you, like, he does that. And that's what I think I like about him a lot. Oh, yeah, he keeps pushing people. Yep. It's and awesome. He, and you're right. Like, he's not everybody's flavor. But that's the thing. No matter who your flavor is, just talk Talk, be real. Be yourself. Because yeah. some people are going to like you, and no matter what you do, some people just aren't. And who cares? And I think he legitimately wants to help other people, too. Like, I just got my insurance license working for Real Financial and Bradley and his people. Very cool. And, like, he's, like, all on board. He's like, everybody's expectation should be to make over 300 k this year. And I'm like, well, we'll find out. But, you know, yeah. like, it, it's a great attitude to have. And right. he legitimately cares. Like, he has no business. Like, he is financially set for the rest of his life, no problem. Like his kids are probably financially set for the rest of his life. Yeah. And he still wants to help a bunch of people get out of poverty. Like people who are starving out there, like give them an opportunity to at least showcase the best version of yourself and help people out. That's it. Well, it's like the introduction to his podcast, uh, getting information from people who have it to the people who need it. Like that's really his deal. It's what he wants to do. So, um, yeah, I love podcasts and it's, you know, I just started my own again, and, and like I saw you. In fact, you kind of inspired me to get going again. We had met over at uh, the Hot Works Grand Opening, and you had Zach and Hank doing yeah. some video, and and that was really cool too because they did a video for us that was free, like to promote Regenerate. It was like little thirty second deal. They put it together super professional, and I was that talking to you about your podcast, and then you told me it was here. I'm like, what? Because like right, I right, you were here. I, you were here. I was here. Like, what was your show about? Um, so Aftershock Online was more just business related. Um, and this one, you know, one more round is going to be about business, fitness, family, faith, sports. It's going to be a little more uh, eclectic and wider reaching because I want to have serve, you know, um, subject matter experts that aren't just business owners. Because business owners are great, but again, that's not going to relate to as many people. And there's also success principles you can use whether you own a business, whether you, you don't. Right. Um, and there's just a wider reaching of stories. So 
um, yeah, that's that's what it used to be about. And how many episodes are you in? You've done like three or four, right, already? So we have four that are recorded. Our third one just dropped today. Our fourth one will drop on Wednesday. So Monday and Wednesday, we drop um, an episode every week. I saw the one, obviously, with Roland, Rage in the Cage. Yep. For anybody in the Phoenix area is awesome Friday night. Yep, Friday night. So we're doing Muay Thai, and it's, it's yeah. awesome. So Roland, uh, if you don't know who he is, he started Rage in the Cage back in 1998, where there really wasn't any MMA uh, whatsoever. The UFC was still kind of in its infancy on its right. like second go-around, and uh, he had a Brazilian jiu-jitsu background. So he trained with the Gracies out in California, ended up moving out here, started his own schools. Uh, and then he's like, maybe I should start promoting. Got into it and it, it blew up. He worked super hard um, at it, but he really took that and he promoted it well. The Rage in the Cage was, was huge. So anyway, he now uh, got it back 20 some odd years later. He promotes Muay Thai, which is this weekend's Rage in the Ring. And Muay Thai is fun because it's much different than MMA. There's no, no grappling on the ground. So it's just all stand up, you know, a lot of like grabs, a lot of knees, um, but it's a very fast pace. So people yeah. that don't necessarily understand the art of the ground game and that can be a little slower, Muay Thai really can get you going. Plus we do the dollar bets, as you know, come out. But Which for the record, I won both of our dollar bets. Yep. Yeah, I think you ended up walking away, I think with $4, I think two for me. Yep. And uh, two, I think, from Zach. So, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, if you guys want to go, uh, it's, I think the general admission is 45 bucks. There are four, 16 fights scheduled, so there should be at least 12 to 14. There's always a couple because they're coming from out of state right. that don't end up uh, making it out. But it's a heck of a, a time. That's a really, really good venue as well. So that's over on, uh, it's at the Stratus Event Center. Uh, this Friday. Great event center, too. Walking in there for the first time, I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, you don't even really know it's there. It's not in, like, the greatest part of town, but you walk in the event center, and you're like, this is cool. Yeah, I mean, it's right next to, like, a subway, mm -hmm. like a place where, like, a Chuck E. Cheese used to be. I'm right. like, oh, wow, this is actually, like, you could hold just about anything here. Yep. Have, like, a live broadcast. They have a commentary team, which I want to talk to Roland about. Would love to get in the commentary team for that. Yeah, you know, um, actually, remind me Friday. Maybe we'll get John because they had me come on and do some commentary, which was fun. I'd never done that. I, How well do you know Muay Thai? Um, oh, I mean, I've watched probably 20 events. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I mean, I have a black belt in Shaolin Kempo, so I, I know quite a bit about the martial arts. And that's from, you know, many years ago. I've always been interested. But Muay Thai, I do know it's just more of a stand-up game, you know, a lot of clenches. Um, but, hey, you can, anybody can sit there and look at a fight talk about what's going on as long as you're charismatic and you have a personality yes exactly that's basically what i do for like every sport that isn't baseball or softball baseball is my one true love and because of that i can do softball everything else like the exciting sports basketball football volleyball i can do because i've watched it enough maybe i can't analyze it like a football brain can right but when things get exciting i can be charismatic as hell yep it's easy to make a call like that when you're excited and you're passionate about something it is. And, it, you know, something like that, like you're saying, you almost feed off the energy as yeah. it's coming. And, I, and I've watched a bunch of your shows. I mean, you've got that charismatic uh, way of delivering and, and doing like a play by play. Because originally broadcasting, wasn't that your initial passion? It's still what I'm doing. Just yeah. got brought on by uh, GCU and ESPN to do freelance for them. That's why I did this past weekend. GCU softball had five games, and I broadcasted all those for ESPN Plus and ESPN 3, cool. which is very exciting coming out of school, too. Because yeah. when I went to GCU, all the games were streamed on YouTube and basically the website. And as soon as we graduated, they're like, yep, ESPN Plus is buying out all the rights. I'm like, damn it. Like, I would have loved to broadcast those ESPN games as a college student. But now, since I'm like 10 minutes away from campus, they're just like, we'll just hire you as freelance whenever we need you. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, no, that's awesome, man. And that's what's neat about like this. I mean, you've had a lot of pretty, really big guests on the show. And I'm sure it opens doors. But again, you're, you're, you're talking you know, and it's not broadcast necessarily because it's yeah. not like a live event. Um, but, uh, yeah, so baseball is your passion, you're saying? Yes, sir. Grew up um, Long Valley, New Jersey. That was the town about 45 minutes outside Manhattan. Went to about 50 Yankee games a year. Basically lived in the Bronx, New York. And, as soon, like, I was five years old, I think, when I made up my mind that I wanted to be a play-by-play -play broadcaster. Just watching the games. I was just analyzing things on TV, predicting things before they happened, mm -hmm. saying things before the actual commentator said it themselves. And my dad's just like, natural. Like, you should do that. 
And the first opportunity I got, I got a chance to live in Los Angeles for a summer, my first year in school, and got a play-by-play -play opportunity and did like 80 games during the summer for a team. And ever since then, I've been doing games for GCU up until I graduated. Now I'm doing freelance for them a little bit and um, gotten opportunities to do local high school teams out in like Chandler and... Uh, Which one's in Chandler? I don't know. I don't know the Chandler names. Chandler High, Basha, Hamilton. Basha. I'm okay. familiar with that one. I've done Perry. them a few times. Yes. Oh. Uh, Estrella Foothills, which evidently is like a very rich area in mm. Arizona. I've never been there before. Every time I drive in, it's like right over the lake with all the fountains and everything. I'm like, this is this has to be one of the wealthier spots in Arizona. You, I know uh, we got Scottsdale and Chandler. Yeah. Are you talking about uh, Australia Mountain out there in the West Valley? Yeah, it's by Goodyear, I think. I think yeah. it is in Goodyear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's in the West Valley. It's, yeah, it's unbelievable. Kind of like south off the I-10. Yeah, it's, it is amazing. Like in the fall, I'd always be driving in around like 6.30, 7 o'clock, so the sun was setting over the lake. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is gorgeous. Like, I can't believe we've never been here, like, on, like, a picnic or just walking around. Yeah, it's a neat community out there. It's a hidden gem. Yeah, it really is. In fact, years ago when that community was first being built, and we're talking, like, 15 years ago, my wife and I were, like, dream building, you know, back yeah. when we were, you know, brand new, married, and, and we were out there with some friends, and, like, this is where we want to live. We want to own own plane. We can fly to the other side of the tent, because it is yeah. kind of deep out there a little bit, coming from the East Valley, which is where right. we come from. But yeah, it's awesome. So of all the commentators then, because you've got a, who, who's your favorite? I grew up with Michael Kay with the Yankees on the S Network. John Sterling did radio. It was like night and day. Loved Michael Kay. As a kid, I didn't appreciate John Sterling because he, he's kind of a homer in a sense. They'll mm -hmm. call him a homer, kind of a goofball. But growing up, I'm like, this guy loves what he does. Like, he is a legend in the business. Uh, Joe Buck Got, gets a lot of heat, but he is the greatest of all time, in my opinion, for what he's been able to do. He's, I guess he's going to sign a big deal with ESPN now, him and Troy Aikman. They're leaving Fox Sports, cool. which is going to – he's going to be the highest paid broadcaster ever. I think it's like $75 million a year. They're People can him. say what they want about Joe Buck. The ma fact of the matter is that man can do any sport. Yeah. And he can make even boring – and I, I am a golfer, and I do love watching golf, but to most people, it's boring. He can actually – Make that fun. His voice on television in any sport, you're like, that's Joe Buck. Like, I can listen to this because he is. Right. He's the enigma. He is. Of sports broadcasting. I like Tony Romo a lot in the last, I think, four or five years as he got he in. He is the oracle of broadcast. He literally predicts every play before it happens. It, it's crazy to watch, actually. Like, he was born for it. Mm-hmm. And, and recent history, I think he's probably the one that's come out and been like, wow, this this dude should have been doing this forever. I mean, yeah. he was hurt every year. He had plenty of time. Yep. Yeah. He'll go down as one of the greatest quarterbacks that really didn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of feel for the guy because he did. Yeah. He got hurt usually the second or third game every year, and then he had this rebuilding. But you'd see the talent in yeah. those couple of games. Yeah. I feel like Dak Prescott's kind of following in that same uh, it's still early. It's definitely. still early. I'm a Cowboys fan, by the oh, way. Oh, so. uh, I don't want to go there then. No, no I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I'm numb to them. Like, I was watching them play the 49ers yeah. in the wild card game this year with no expectations, just laughing. Yeah. You know, the Cowboys, they do have the potential to be really good. And I feel like they've gotten closer and closer and closer. I mean, being in a playoff game, that's it's a big thing. It's just that they got to stay healthy. Um, I thought this year was going to be the year. I'm like, Rodgers is going to get traded out. He doesn't want to be in Green Bay anymore. Brady's retired. We don't got to worry about that. Like, it's going to be the Cowboys and the Rams. Like, as long as we play well, we're easily the two seed, if not the one seed if the Rams fall off yeah. a little bit. Because Sean McVay was rumored to leave a little bit. That would have definitely hurt him. Aaron Donald was rumored to retire. They're both coming back. Aaron Rodgers re-signs with the Packers. And now, as of yesterday, Tom Brady is back, coming in back for his 23rd season. So the Cowboys are now back where yeah. they were this year. They're, they're going to have to earn it. Yeah. How weird was that? that Tom I'm Brady... not surprised. Like, I got the notification on my phone. I'm like, whatever. Like, didn't even – I didn't have a reaction in my body at all. I, I did. I'm like, the dude should be going off into the sunset to do the next thing he's going to be great at, which is going to be business. No he way. was already getting that tick, that itch. Right. He's like, I still have plenty left in the tank. It was Why like, go out with a loss, too? It was like three weeks ago that he retired, yeah. right? So, yeah, I'm I was, not stunned at all. I'm excited. I, I, I love Tom Brady. A lot of people don't. I think he is obviously the greatest. And he says he's got unfinished business. So, you know, I'm going to have a nice little wager at the beginning of the season on Tampa Bay. 
I wonder what that conversation was like because when he retired a month ago or whenever it was, he probably had the talk with Giselle about it. She probably was a big factor in it. And then yeah. a month later, he's just like, I can't do it. Right. Like the competitor in him is still awake and alive. She's probably tired of having him home as much. My wife I mean, it is be. the off season. Yeah. It's not like any of that would have changed. He's probably home all the That's time. That's true. This point in the year anyway. That, well, see, I don't know. The guy never really took a break. He was constantly training for the next season. Yeah. Like he wasn't one to go on lavish vacations forever. It really, I mean, they went on a few, but not like a lot of the players do. A lot of players take off multiple months uh, in the off season. He never he's got did some, that. He's also got some businesses, some brands that mm -hmm. he's building with TB12. Like he's, he would have been busy anyway. So yeah, he probably just didn't want to turn off the lights. He didn't like the idea of not showing up to camp. Like it's coming around the corner. He's probably like, I yeah. I can't do anything about this. Gronk never even hinted at retirement, right? which I thought was strange. I thought when Brady left, he was definitely going to go back into retirement. But they're both coming back. Almost a whole team. I mean, they really don't, didn't have a lot of turnover. They went from, from being, like, one of the more irrelevant teams in football to when Brady retired, probably going back to irrelevancy mm -hmm. to, again, being one of the favorites again with them coming back. Yeah. So Bucks fans, they're probably in a world of emotions. Yes, Absolutely. I'm a Cardinal fan, and I've been that way my whole life. What do you think of Kyler? Um, you know, I really think he's very talented. I think he's one of the, one of the fastest quarterbacks yeah. that's out there. I think his height does hurt him a lot. I mean, he gets so many batted balls that uh, actually, I mean, it hurts us when you add up over the season. Yeah. Um, but I do think he's got, he needs to work on his leadership ability. I think that, that's one thing with him doing the whole Instagram thing we saw on this whole contract. I get it. I get the disputes. But, you know, keep that out of the limelight. Don't delete your Twitter or your, I'm sorry, your, your Instagram account. Yeah. Uh, it's just not, it, it showed, it was like a pouting little kid is what I saw that as. So um, he's since restored everything. I th think he's coming back next year. They're going to uh, probably strike a deal. So he'll, he'll get his money. But we'll see if he can increase his leadership because at the end of the day, that's what it takes to win in this league. Like, I, what else was he going to do? Like, go back to baseball? <laughs> like, that was rumored a little bit. Yeah, it was rumored. Like, that's probably not the best decision because you're going to have to go through the minors. You're not going to make any money leading up to it. Well, I think it's a they're, grind. Yeah, I, I don't think baseball would have been the play. And I hear he was a heck of a baseball player. I never really got to see any film or anything on yeah. him uh, from a baseball standpoint. But there are a lot of teams that would have fit him well in the NFL, um, other than the Cardinals. So he had options. Uh, I think he could have gone to Seattle if Russell Wilson, that Russell Wilson Denver deal could have very easily been a Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray um, deal. So he had, he had options and he still has options, but I think he's going to stay as a Cardinal. If he can mature, be a leader. Uh, I think they've got some, some high hopes and we got a Cardinals got a pretty good team. You like sports, Noel? Really? So that's really the only one I can see what team? I'm from Arizona, so I have to be Yikes. I know. I, yeah. See, growing up in my neck of the woods, you had the Devils, you had the Rangers, and you had the Islanders. All right. I'm not a huge Islanders fan. Nobody really is, I, unless you're from Long Island or Brooklyn, I guess, these days. My, my least favorite enemies are the Kings, the Knights. Yeah. So what got you into hockey from being from Arizona? I, I have a co-worker, actually, who was really into it. He would always talk about it. Sounded fun. And so he got the chance to get to know it. And then the first time I went to a live game, I was like, this is so fast-paced. You know, I, that's why I can't watch baseball. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's too slow. Uh, it's fast-paced. There's usually a fight or two. It's you know, a high-scoring game. It's just it's so fun. It's so high energy. Everyone's always, I feel like, even the Sunday afternoon, The first ever hockey game I went to was uh, TD Garden, Boston Bruins. Like, double, double overtime ends in a shootout. I'm like, this is awesome. Like, you have to go to a hockey game live in order to really appreciate it. Yeah. Like, if you're not a fan and you watch it on TV, it's not doing it a justice. It's true. I, I, the first one I went to, I was super lucky. I was in North Carolina for this um, business retreat. And my, uh, the guy, his name is Joe, we had seats on the glass for the Hurricanes. Yeah. And it was the year after they won the Stanley Cup. So I got to literally sit there and, and watch. We were right behind uh, the, the goal. 
and people just getting pounded, pucks coming up, hitting right there. I mean, it's, it's insane. I mean, to watch it from that perspective uh, was, yeah, that made me more of a hockey fan, I guess. But being in Arizona, I just never played it. And I only usually liked things that I had played before because I understood them. But maybe I'll give it another shot. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I don't think I could have Muay Thai played fights hockey. Then. Yeah. 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 If, I could, if I could go back and do it again, I would have tried wrestling or yeah. jiu-jitsu or anything like that. Jiu-jitsu I did try for one summer. Didn't really get into it that much, but I definitely would have done more wrestling and would have tried MMA. You seem like you'd be experience. really quick. I think you have, like, the build. Like, you would be quick and hard to, to take down. So, yeah, oh, you yeah. probably would have done quite well in wrestling. I appreciate it because yeah. I was not a great athlete in high school. No, well, Pe- <laughs> most wrestlers aren't. As soon as you said that out loud, there's probably going to be like a ton of people laughing when they watch this on YouTube. Like, there's no way he was an awful athlete. See, I don't feel like it's the same athleticism in wrestling as there is for like uh, basketball or some uh, positions in football or baseball. Yeah, it's more, it's it's different. It's more strength based. It's quickness. Um, it's not as hand-eye coordination driven, yeah. which a lot of the other sports are. So that's why, honestly, a lot of wrestlers aren't very good at any other sport. Right. But you don't mess with wrestlers. No. Yeah. Just taking a look. I saw you looking. Do you see this stuff. dripping a little I bit? A little bit. I'm, I'm like, is that bit. that better not be <laughs> blood? No, it probably just. Don't so, me. Yeah. So a friend of mine, uh, her mom, they were. Uh, getting a an IV and her mom had to, to get up. Yeah. And uh, she, you know, to you go use the restroom, and because of the way it, it was balanced, the blood started to go up into the hose. And I'm like, I would have, uh, would not have been good. Yeah. yeah. A lot of a lot of people. That's like the one thing that bothers them the most is the blood. The blood doesn't bother me as much. It's just. The needle is the thing that... I think the thing me. that bothered me, like, initially was, like, okay, there's, like, a 1% chance something goes wrong here. Yeah. No, she's, We're going to have footage of it. She's a pro. One of our best. Well, that's good. What did you originally, like, what did you get a degree in, and what did you start doing? Life. I got a degree in life. No. Um, so, like, the quick rundown on me, I, I was... So uh, didn't get a degree. No. So, I was 19. I, uh, I had a couple of lucky breaks. I was 19. I was always into fitness. And I was, wor- I was managing two dry cleaners, trying to get out of that. And I went into the health club uh, to get a job called Lead Box. So basically Lead Box, little boxes, you go into restaurants, win a free membership, that kind of thing. It was a total entry level type thing. So I worked for Valley Total Fitness and I was only there for three months. And the guy who I worked for, who had a degree, was much older than me, uh, who was making really good money. He's like, I think you should, to Cindy, who was a boss, she's like, hey, uh, I think he should be the one to take my position. I'm 19. I'm like, oh, okay, because then I just managed the people like me. So I got into that. I'm at church one day. This guy comes up to me um, named Leon, who had this funny accent. I was like, hey, man, nice to meet you. I uh, heard about you from Eric, and he's like, you need to come work for us. I'm like, hey, nice to meet you. I don't know who you are. He's like, oh, I'm, and he was one of the owners of a company called Pure Fitness, or he was a partner there. And uh, he had me interview with one of the main owners who's now my partner in a lot of different things today. And I got into the fitness business being the field marketing director for that. So that led me into marketing. I also got into network, network marketing, doing Amway for uh, quite some time, which there is no better school of learning things as far as success and business than going into any network marketing. Not that some of them, and I didn't make a ton of money. I sponsored a lot of people, but man, the things that taught me was huge. Yeah. So I started my own company. Well, I went to Gannett. I worked there for three years. So they own the Arizona Republic, AZ Central. Got a lot of tactical training and sales and marketing. Uh, certainly when it, this is online, this is 08. Yeah. And I left to go into business for myself. So we sold my wife's car. So we had a little capital. Uh, and I went into business with a... Uh, <laughs> It's called the anti-hangover drink. Went from bar to bar to bar, selling basically it's a bunch of B12 that you put in drinks, right, right. Uh, rather than um, Red Bull at the time. And then that turned into a digital agency two years later, and that was aftershock. That was that was when aftershock started. So that that's what I my one of my main businesses is, which we do pay-per-click advertising, website design, development, but. I've had all kinds of things come up, you know, the IV business. Which is great. 
a lot of different experiences as opposed to like being like, all right, I got a degree in this, so I pursued this, and then that's all you did. Right. Well, and really, it, I, I just, I got bored yeah. um, real easily, and I was able to learn some really important things. Sales and marketing are skills that you can really take into anything, and then the business aspect, you know, I got kicked in the teeth a few times, yeah. but I've learned a lot. So now I'm just, I feel like I'm just really old and I've just learned a whole f bunch of stuff in the last yeah. 20 years. And it's fun because then now you have these new ideas and these new businesses you start, these new opportunities through relationships uh, that you've had for a long time. And that's, that's what I love. I love business in general, more like the operations side uh, in addition to the marketing. That's kind of my, my expertise and, and what I do most of with the companies. All right. I mean, it's amazing. Like some people are fully content with like starting out at one job and just staying there, working their, their way up. And other people just like want to dance all around. Like I want to experience all these different things. Like you get bored quickly. Like your brain is trained to like go, go, go. Yeah. I, I admire those people. And that's what's so great about it's what's so great about our country, right? You, we have different people that have to, to do different things. And I mean, I admire people that can go to a job every single day and do the same thing from, you know, year one to retirement, you know, 401k, do the whole thing. I would go insane. I, I just can't do that. It's not how my personality is built. I've got to be doing other things. I've got to be meeting um, different people, looking at different businesses, how to grow the same business in different ways because it keeps my my mind going and my mind occupied. But yeah, you put me in a desk for eight hours a day with the same thing every single day, I would go insane. I think you could put me in that situation like nine to five, but then my five to nine or five to 10, 11, whatever, I get to do what I want to do. Yep. Like if I got into a situation where like I had to get a day job because I got to pay my bills, yeah. but then continue to pursue my passions and that's what's going to drive you past the five to or nine to five, that's what I get, you know? Absolutely. And honestly, I mean, I think everybody should have a, a job to sustain their lifestyle and you should have that side hustle that becomes your full-time thing. Um, I remember I was reading Shoe Dog, and it's about Phil Knight and his story, the guy who started Nike. The guy had a full-time job as an accountant, or a, I think he was a CPA, for the first 10 years that Nike was around. He literally would travel to China, do all that stuff as his vacations to build Nike, but he kept his full-time job so he could keep funding the business. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of entrepreneurs really miss, especially since it's like this hot topic today, like owning your own business. Now, owning your business, it, it own business is really freaking hard, especially when it's you and you have all the different elements you have to take care of before you can start hiring people. I mean, no, have a job, start no. learning the different, you know, things that go on in a business that are going to make it grow. But don't just take that leap. If you have a family and you need to support them, hustle on the side, burn the midnight oil, do what you need to do. But having that stable income will keep you from going into massive debt and then having to cr climb out of it. Honestly, I did 10 years ago and I had to climb out of it and it's, you know, it's not easy. So yeah, that's my advice to anybody looking to have their own business. Just make sure you have a nest egg before you make that, that leap full time so that you're not uh, making everybody around you struggle. Yeah. I mean, uh, I can speak from my own experience, like coming out of school, just wanting to make this my full time gig, which I've been able to do. But at the mm -hmm. same time, financially, I'm like, maybe I should pursue a job that can make me a little bit more money, keep me a little bit more stable. Cause like I can pay my bills, but like, I also want to do other stuff. I don't want to feel handicapped. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's not even to like start like a business with like 500 employees. Right. Like, right. It's just like a little thing. I got to pay Hank and Zach. I got to do all of this other stuff. Right. Yep. So it's funny because like I grew up with three three main idols, you could say. Derek Jeter with the Yankees, never graduated, never went to college. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Grohl with the Foo Fighters, never graduated high school, high school dropout. Chris Jericho, wrestler, I think he did like two years of community college. Like, I think like there's a lot of people that are living proof like you don't need to get a degree in something in order to be successful. Because a lot of people go to great, you know, great schools with big reputations. They get their degree and then all of the... They just hold hold that as the standard. Like, oh, I went to so and so and got a degree in something, right. but you actually didn't get any real experience. I, I agree wholeheartedly. I I think college is a really good thing for certain careers that that have to have it. Right. So, becoming a nurse, becoming a doctor, like college is absolutely necessary. Yeah. 
uh, if you're becoming, if you want to go into sales, uh, absolutely not necessary. Yeah. Go get a job selling insurance. Go get a job at a car dealership. Learn how that works. Uh, if you want to get a job in, into marketing in today's digital world, go work at any one of the digital agencies that's got a good reputation. Start off with, as an intern, yep. you know, paid or unpaid. Start getting that as your education. Uh, the trades like plumbing and HVAC and all that, college isn't necessary. So it just really has to make sense. And unfortunately, with the absorbent prices that colleges are charging today, it really puts people in a bad position. I've seen so many people, like even neighbors and stuff that are many years older than me, uh, that have just still paying off student loans. One of my, my dentists, he paid off his student loans when he was 60. And I'm like, you're a dentist. And I knew that yeah. about how much he was, he was making good money. So maybe he just wasn't prioritizing or whatever, but you shouldn't be in that financial burden uh, when you're just trying to go learn some skills to actually add some value to this country. Yeah. Um, they need to make it af affordable. People talk about reform. I think college reform should be the first place that they look and looking at that pricing and making sure that it actually is the value for value relationship that every business relationship should be. I mean, you look at people who are even smart with their money who are just like buried in their student loans coming out of school and yeah. you don't know what to do. Like everything you have is going towards that. Yeah, that's six month uh, time bomb, right? That's when they have to start paying six months yeah. later and then that, that hits. And if they're not in that career that they want, it's the other thing I see happen a lot. Unless you're going into more of a specialized, like nursing, most people that go into nursing school, they end up becoming nurses. But somebody that goes in for like something general uh, like communications and communications is great because you can use that anywhere. Yeah. You don't really know where you're going to land though. Exactly. Um, or maybe you start out and you get a degree in, in some sort of math or uh, you get a degree in some sort of specific uh, social you know, services type thing. If you don't know where you're going to land to spend that amount of money on it is just a real gamble. Yeah. I got a sports management degree. Just going okay. in, I'm just like sports done. Yeah. There it is. Had no clue, and then you learn more as you go. And I'm like, maybe I should have gotten a business degree. Maybe I should have, you know, pursued maybe digital film a little bit more, considering content creation is all I do now. Yeah, well, and I'm, but how much have you learned about that just by doing? Just ex that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like when you're in a classroom and you're being lectured on something, I don't think that's the best way to learn something. No, I'll, I'll tell you actually. And I think most of these universities know that too. They do. Well, I'll tell you when I started to learn to build websites, this is exactly what happened. So I was a partner with another person in a company right before I started Aftershock. I had left Gannett. Um, and this gentleman and I parted ways because I did all the work, brought in all the money and he didn't want to pay me. And you know what? He was the principal on paper, but I'm like, I'm, I'm not gonna put up with that. So I'm like, all you do is build websites. I can learn to do that. So then I just dove into learning how to do it, looked at every YouTube video that was available back then, heard about WordPress. And this is, again, this is like 2008, a long time ago. And I'm just dabbling and learning and HTML code and PHP and all this stuff that was like foreign language. But I learned it, I ended up learning it. And you know, within a year, I started like building these websites. I didn't need to go to school and there really, I even looked at classes in the community college back then. There wasn't even a good class that I could yeah. go and take for it. It's like you just gotta dive in and do the work and learn it. Um, and I think what you've probably learned with the video editing and the sound and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I don't know that you would have gotten much more by going to college and you, you certainly paid a lot less. What do you think the decision is gonna be when it comes to your kids going to school? Like is it for the experience, <laughs> nothing else or is it so, like? I, I have two thoughts on that. So my wife and I talk about it a lot. We, are, we already have some money that we're putting aside for it for each one of the three. Um, and it, it, when they turn 18, they're gonna get to make a decision on whether they wanna go to school yeah. and go to college or they wanna start a business with it. And by that time, I mean, obviously I can help them start a business and you know, give them, you know, here's how we put together a business plan, walk them through that. And honestly, I know of my three kids, probably two of them are gonna wanna go to college my middle son, not a chance. Yeah. He just doesn't like school. He likes to be active, hands-on. So he'll probably take the latter of the options. Yeah. Um, but I mean, for the network, it's great. That's one thing you know, Bradley always says. You go to college, you go to college for the network. It's the people you meet there, you never know who you're gonna exactly. do business with. Um, and I was kind of lucky in that way because I even, in, even though I only went to two months of community college, well, I hung out with a lot of people that were going to college. I had a lot of friends and built a network of a lot of very you know, uh, 
educated people to this day. I just don't happen to have that degree myself. He's Brad Lee is a perfect example. Another high school dropout was yep. told that he was going to be an absolute failure, and now look at him now. Yep. You know. Yeah. He's doing all right. I, I'd say like if I ever have the uh, blessing to have children one day, it's like if you're going to go to school, do it for that, and also get the experience like if i were to be living out here i'd be like go back east go to the midwest go somewhere if, like you've never experienced that's where my mindset would be on that's, top of learning the trade of all things that make you successful that's a good mindset because when you go somewhere where you don't have the friends and family to rely on yeah and you have to meet new people and get that experience i think it makes you a different different kind of person oh yeah so i agree with that philosophy a lot i've completely changed i first 18 years in new jersey came out here i've been here for six years this uh, this place has become my home and i'm a completely different person than when i was there yeah. like seriously if you told people back home my parents brother sister like that i'd be doing a talk show 500 episodes deep in a talk show they'd yeah. be it's blasphemy because you couldn't get two words out of me in a conversation no growing kidding. up quietest kid in the world so what was it that brought you out of your shell so to speak i don't know yeah. i i don't know i think like i have grown with this show like mm -hmm. we've been doing it for five years now and i've been able to at least improve with the art of conversation mm -hmm. to a point where i'm able to understand things better get a different perspective on everybody else's life because i've interviewed so many different people on this platform you know whether it be again athletes musicians actors um business entrepreneurs, other titles that I wouldn't necessarily like know of, you know, a uh, guy who works for NASA. Um, God, there's just been so many different cool stories that I've heard along the way that make me think like, I don't know. Like it, I finally got to a point where it was just like, I don't, I don't care. Like I'm, I have my own thoughts and opinions, you know? Right. I like stories. I think that's my favorite part. I've always been big with storytelling. Yeah. yeah. I remember my dad told me when I was young, he's like, son, learn to tell stories and it'll serve you your entire life. And I think about the favorite people that I have that I hang around with. It's the ones that, you know, obviously that you, we have some similarities and stuff, yeah. but they tell great stories and they, they have fun and they can relay their communication well. Um, and those that can't, they're just not as fun to be around, no. I guess. I mean, in, again, like 500 plus episodes of doing this, there's people like like-minded like you that I could sit down and have a normal conversation with. Mm -hmm. There's people who have great stories that necessarily don't think the way I do, but I'm able to sit down and listen. Yeah. And then I've had guests that flat out, I'm like, okay, this person is eccentric. They are on a whole nother level than me. Like we cannot relate on anything right now. Yeah. You know, but it's interesting to get all these different experiences. It, you know? it is. And it's uh, fun to see that from different perspectives because, um, I remember my wife's uncle, he told me one time he was in college and uh, the professor says there's always, uh, is there only two sides to a story? Yeah. And my wife's uncle said, yeah, there's two sides of only two sides to a story. He says, no, there's not. And they argued for a little while. And he said, then the professor explained to himself, he says, no, there's 50 people in here. Yeah. And if I explain one thing, that's 50 different perceptions. And and 50 different stories for that same thing. Yeah. So by being able to have 500 different people you've interviewed and all their different experiences, I mean, I can't even imagine what it's done for you to kind of open your mind in certain areas and then certain areas probably validate what you've already, what you already believe. I mean, that's invaluable in and of itself. I mean, that's why I continue to do it. It's a learning tool. It's a networking tool. <laughs> like I didn't think that, I thought this was gonna be a resume May builder in college. Like mm -hmm. that's all I planned for this to be. And now it's literally become like a part of my life that I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to let go. No matter how successful or unsuccessful it gets too. Yeah, well, I, I think you've, you've had a lot of success. You know, To be 500 episodes deep, I know a lot of the people that you've uh, had on plus, I mean, you get a lot of traction, a lot of YouTube views, a lot of people that are checking this out. So, I mean, yeah, kudos to you for sticking with it. We're growing, you know. Yep. You got to keep doing it one day at a time, brick by brick, as Portnoy from Barstool Sports says. That's right. Uh, I I do it because I love it, you know. Like, it's been a long time coming. Finally, we're able to partner with Evan and Mayweather Boxing and Fitness over the last year, which has been great for us, great for um, – Again, building community in mm -hmm. Arizona, too, is something that I didn't think was going to happen. You know, being here the past year, I think I've learned more on my own than I've learned in school, both business-wise, friendship-wise, building relationships with people. Like, it's been 
it's been a crazy ride, but it's definitely been worth the experience. It's been worth the ride. Absolutely. Well, the more hands you shake, the more money you make, but also the more experiences you have. And that's what right. it's all about, man. Growing your network and getting to know different people. Who is, uh, I know we talked about this at the way beginning before we went on, but your quote unquote dream guest. I know you didn't like, you want to build within the community too, but like who's someone you would love to have a conversation with on your new show? Dream guest, um, you know, as it grows, Bradley, probably because he's yeah. been the one that's been the most inspirational to me to actually get back and want to do this again. Um, because as you know, it's work. It's not, I mean, it's fun, right. but there's a lot of work that goes behind putting it out and actually getting It becomes a job. There. It really it, does. It whether does. Whether you want to admit that to yourself or not. And, or, you know, you hire people, which is a, it's now a new investment that you're putting out there. Um, so he's the one that kind of like, yeah, if I could have on, but then like Ed Milet, so I'm part of the Arte syndicate with Ed Milet, Andy Frisella. Um, and those guys are just uh, amazing business guys and just humans, you know, so they would be in a very interesting conversation, but I feel like I've already, I hear them talk every day all exactly. the time, but, uh, yeah, so probably, Bradley. I mean, Bradley's one of those guys that if you apply on his website, he'll probably have you on his show. Yeah. Like it's that easy. I've come to learn there have been a few guys I've interviewed here that were just like, yeah, man, you should definitely go on his show. I'm like, why the hell would he want to talk to me? It's like, you literally just apply on the website give a brief description of what you're doing and I'll probably have you on. Will it air? Who knows? Yeah. Like there's been a few guys I've had on where their episode just finally aired, but they were back on in like October. Yeah. You know, so it might take a while, but I think that's like go on his show kind of, he'll ask stuff about you and then you go back and forth. Well, I'll I think that'd be great. That would definitely be a, a fun one. Cause you know, I, I did get a chance to meet him briefly. Uh, it was a event put together called the $10 billion event yeah. um, by Albert Preciado. And he was one of the speakers there along with Ed Milet, Andy Frisella. It was a heck of a lineup, but I did get a chance to, to briefly meet him. So yeah, I'll, I'll apply. What the hell? Uh, and another guy, Cardone, Grant Cardone just built Cardone Ventures like literally right over there. I saw that. It's two minutes that way. I went to like his grand opening event. Yeah. His studio is unbelievable. Is it? On the top floor. I'm trying to get in with them to collaborate on some content over there too, but it's it's unbelievable how many different resources in the Scottsdale slash Phoenix area there are alone. This is, the, I think, the... It's becoming the, one of the more bigger cities, I think. It is, and it's one of the best places to move um, for a business-minded yeah. uh, company, like somebody that wants to not be raked over the coals in taxes and yeah. wants to be able to operate without as many regulations you know arizona is a good place for that and i hope we continue to see that here in florida i think here in florida and then certain parts of texas are starting to see that influx of the business community wanting to build and i just hope that that continues i think it will i think it will i think we're all doing a good job of being in communication to building community i know evans we're reaching out to a ton of people soon to get like a whole group of organizations together so I'll help each other out on that side, the business side, content creation wise. Obviously, I got a great team here, uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to uh, working together, going to the event on Friday. Again, yep. Rage in the Cage for anybody in the Phoenix area that wants to come out. What is it? A forty five dollar entry? Yeah, forty five dollar entry. Um, you know, there's uh, going to be drink specials. There's um, uh, general admission. And then there's also some VIP booths and stuff that we got a VIP booth that you guys will be. Uh, coming in uh, too, but uh, it's going to be a ton of fun. I'm telling you, if you've never been to an event like this, if you just go one time, you'll be hooked. Rage in the Cage this Friday in Phoenix. Josh Norris, thank you so much for coming on. Noel, you too, Regenerate IV for all of you guys. What what are you guys on social media? Yeah, so Instagram, Regenerate IV. Our uh, website's regenerateivs.com. Uh, so you can follow us. Instagram, we're pretty active on. Uh, if you guys want to book an appointment, you can either go through there or you can hit us up on the number on the website and we can usually be out within an hour to your home to help you get, get right. Well, for those of you guys listening, you regenerate IV, check them out here in the Phoenix area. This was episode 499 of the podcast. Stay tuned for episode 500 next. Zach, hit the lights, man. Yeah.